gentlemen, welcome once again to another episode of It's Me Speaking to You. I am, as always, your ever-faithful host, Mr. Jeffrey Wilson, coming to you live and direct from the gateway to the West, St. Louis, Missouri. And tonight, man, I've, if anybody knows me, I'm a huge professional wrestling, not sports entertainment so much, professional wrestling geek, man, have been since I was a little kid. And St. Louis has always been the spot, the paramount mecca of where real professional wrestling was, dating back to the days of wrestling at the Chase. Sam Muchnick, you know, Ric Flair would always come through here. David Von Erich wrestling, you know, the Kiel Auditorium. <clears throat> it's where it really went down. And these fellas right here, there's, a, there's, there's several organizations here in the Midwest that are putting it down. But these guys here have been putting it down in a way you, you're seeing their growth. You're seeing their talent everywhere. Some of their talent are even trying out for the WWE. They're really putting professional wrestling back on the map. We have the director of media relations, Luke Roberts, and the announcer for Dynamo Pro Wrestling. And this is the organization they represent, folks. Chris Rodell. What's up, fellas? Welcome to It's Me Speaking to You. What's going on, Jeff? How are you doing? I am fantastic, man. As I say, every day above ground is a good day, and I've been wanting to talk to you guys for a while, man, because it's hard to track you guys down, man. Your schedules are quite busy. You guys have, have events going on quite frequently. Uh, Mr. Luke Roberts, pat on your back, sir. I don't know when you sleep, because as your director of media relations, you I see you a little bit of everywhere putting the word out about Dynamo Pro. Well, thank you, Jeff, for, for that vote of confidence. Like I said, sleep is... Sleep is kind of a, one of those things that I'm lucky to get now and again, but like I said, with Dynamo Pro Wrestling and the Dynamo Pro Wrestling Media Department, with guys like Chris Rodell, myself, Larry Nickel, the, the, the guys from Dynamo Pro Aftershock, the podcast of, exclusive of Dynamo Pro Wrestling, these guys, along with myself, they're what help to make everything go on with Dynamo Pro Wrestling. It gives me a few, ch- few seconds to breathe and to sleep now and again. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, you know, everyone, it's a, it's a machine, right? It's kind of like all the working parts, and they all kind of have to work together. And, um, you know, um, like I said, I, I met you guys, I don't know, it's been probably a couple of years now, I'm not sure exactly when, but as a professional wrestling fan, it was so cool to see this independent organization that was really, you know, the venue, you guys go to a lot of venues, but the one I really, really enjoy is the Stratford um, and you guys, you know, you really, you bring it, man. You, it's not so much like it's so old school. I mean, you, you have talent that can do a little bit of everything and your roster is quite deep. Mr. Chris Rodell, you know, I, I actually, I wanted, before we get too deep into like this whole conversation of what's going on now, I want to pick your brain on each of you. And I want to start with Mr. Rodell first. When did you start getting into professional wrestling? When was your era? Le- me personally, I'm a little older than you guys. So I was, uh, you know, WTBS, Ted Turner Station, station was, uh, you know, Georgia Championship Wrestling. And from there, I wound up seeing, you know, Mid-South and World Class. You know, and, uh, and some of the younger guys, it was more of the later WWF stuff. When was your, uh, when did the wrestling bug bite you? I think the first event I can really, truly remember it was WrestleMania three at the Pontiac Silverdome with Hogan and Andre. Oh, absolutely. That's about, my, that's, that's about where I started at. And I went through the whole, attitude, you know, the, the Monday Night Wars, the Attitude Era. And I was actually didn't watch wrestling for a long time and then caught back up with uh, TNA and WWE. So, I mean, I, I missed the, the glory days of what they call SmackDown, the SmackDown 6, I believe they called it. I missed those glory days. SmackDown but 6, I'm, what is that? School me, what is that? Uh, I believe it was... Uh, Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle and Kurt, Chris Benoit and Rey Mysterio and uh, help me out, Luke. Uh, I, I, I was thinking you were thinking the idea of the Dean Malenko's, the, the yes, yes, yes Dean Malenko, Terry Saturn. Uh, but as, as you mentioned earlier, Chris, the Chris Benoit's, the Eddie Guerrero's, the Rey Mysterio's, the Kurt Angle, the time period. Back, I want to say it was about ninety. I want to say ninety-eight, ninety-nine, right about the time where that huge change in the professional wrestling scene took place. When these gentlemen made that jump over from Ted Turner's WCW to the World WWE at the time WWF, mm-hmm. and like I said, that definitely changed the landscape of professional wrestling. Well, and I, and I will even almost uh, you know preempt that like that's. Uh, that whole thing, um, the the jumping of the ships, I felt really began with uh, the Brainbusters. I don't know if you guys remember who the Brainbusters were, 
but uh, Ole, or not. I'm sorry, Tully Blanchard and uh, Arn Anderson. That jumping of the ship really shocked a lot of people who, um, you know, serious professional wrestling fans. And then Dusty came after that. Uh, but yeah, no, I feel you. I mean, and the landscape obviously has changed. And you know, once Vince kind of took the whole lid off of it, so you know, sports entertainment, it just you know, the it just got different, obviously. Um, so what what particular area do you guys dig? You know, what was your what was your particular favorite era? Well, when you were talking was, about things, Jeff, I, w- I was looking at things from the point of view when you're talking about the old days of, of World Championship Wrestling back in the, in the Georgia Championship Wrestling days. To me, I can remember back, the first thing that really registered with me, I had only watched a handful of times. That was almost like tradition with my family, was the idea of going to my grandmother's house, sitting down. She'd have to have dinner done by 5 o'clock because you knew here in, in, in the Midwest by 5.05. 5.05, uh-huh, baby. You had to be there and ready to go. And I remember one of the very first opportunities I had to see was the infamous Black Saturday when you're used to oh. seeing guys like, like Crockett and Shivani regularly <laughs> right there behind the, behind the announcer station, and you don't have Crockett and Shivani. You don't have that crew. You had the representative from the WWF. And like I said, that was... Who in that, that case was, was Vince McMahon. Like, he stepped in. That was... <clears throat> Freddie Miller. Freddie Miller was the the announcer that was that had to do the job of handing the mic to Vince, and I I, I absolutely remember it. And it's uh, tragic, dude. A little little tragic, sad sad day. But you know, wrestling and it evolves. You know, I guess that's kind of kind of what we got this conversations about, man. And you guys have kind of taken that evolution and really, um, you know, it, it blending. It's it's a nice blend of what you guys do. I mean, you're you have cats like, I mean, your your roster is so deep. But I would just mention cats like Shorty Biggs. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Jake Durden, Ricky Cruz. I mean, you know, Ricky Cruz, for example. I mean, the guy's been a little bit of everywhere. His pedigree is, you know, pretty pretty sick as far as the cats he's trained with. You know, from Puerto Rico to Mexico. Um, you got Mike Outlaw. I mean, it's it, it, it's pretty sick to see, man. And these guys are holding their. I mean, it's it. They're traveling everywhere. They're they're really bringing life back into it. Doesn't people don't? Have, I mean, of course, everybody wants to get to the WWE, but. It's you know they're 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 moving around. Some of these territories are blowing up. You guys, there's some here still in the Midwest. Uh, I saw uh, Jake Durden just made his debut at an organization in Florida. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, it's you know, the wrestling isn't going anywhere. Well, it's it's, it's, the, nice it's small. It, it's the small. It's the small groups, the independent groups that make the wrestling business go round. It's what feeds the fire of. Of everything with Jake Rus- with Jake Durden wrestling everywhere. Ricky Cruz came to us from Puerto Rico. I mean, it's the it, the Midwest is where it's at right now. So, which it should be, man. I mean, St. Louis, like I said, back in my day, like I remember Brody coming through here. I remember, like I, I didn't live here, but I just remember when wrestling at the Chase was going on. When I would visit my relatives here, I would see this wrestling at the Chase, and I didn't even understand what that title meant. I'm like wrestling at the Chase. Like, what are you chasing? I, I didn't know. That they were talking about the Chase Park Plaza, like it was just a weird name, but yeah, man, I just St. Louis has always been St. Louis has always been a, a hot spot in wrestling. I mean, absolutely, it's one of the. I mean, it's a shame that we can't get a WrestleMania in the St. Louis. I mean, tell tell me that wouldn't be awesome if we had WrestleMania in St. Louis. Where would you put that though, man? Like his all of his venues are like he's almost beyond doing those. I mean, all the biggest we have is would be the Scott Trade. Like he would, they're, you know, they're doing well, that WrestleMania. I mean, I guess you could, do, you could plus. probably. I mean, you could probably do it at Bush Stadium, or I mean, they're not doing anything in the Trans World Dome anymore. So, what's the maximum <laughs> capacity at Bush Stadium? Uh, that well, I cannot not tell you. Well, to give you an idea, my thinking would be if you go back to the days, I believe it was like WrestleMania 18 or 19, the one that was out of Seattle. And I mean, they did it. I believe it was at Mariner Stadium. And I mean, from what I remember back playoff time, the Bush Stadium was seating. I want to say between forty-five and fifty thousand, and you put seats on the on the turf or on the grass, not the turf. Mm-hmm. You're looking at probably, I would say probably sixty, sixty-five. I mean, that'd be that'd be a good. I mean, again, it would it wouldn't be some of these. They wouldn't be like the last WrestleMania that just passed at a hundred plus thousand people, but it would definitely be sixty-five, seventy thousand people. And, and as we said, going back to the days of guys like. Sam Muchnick and having some of these guys that are the lineage, like you were talking about before, guys like Dick the Bruiser, mm. Ken Patera, Crusher Blackwell, uh, Roger Kirby. I mean, there are a lot, Bulldog Bob Brown, mm. a lot of those wrestlers, and being able 
to bring such a mecca marquee event back to St. Louis. I mean, again, it would be something, and Chris and I have talked about a lot. We think it's it's well overdue. But like I said, we, we don't get to make those decisions. <laughs> Well, of course, yeah. Well, like I said, like I just don't think we have a venue to accommodate where they're at now. Like there was a couple of years they did a little bit some of the smaller venues. <coughs> Excuse me, but I don't know. I, I would definitely would love to see it, man. My goodness, St. Louis, like I said, has been the the spot, and and everybody who knows real the, the history of wrestling knows the reverence you know all fans have for St. Louis, Sam Muchnick, wrestling at the Chase, the Keel. Um, and the role, you know, the NWA at it, in its day was headquartered out of St. Louis. So it's just like, it's pretty much, you know, this is pretty hallowed ground here, St. Louis, as it relates to professional wrestling. Um, so to, 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 talking, moving forward, obviously, uh, you guys obviously have been playing a pretty prominent role with Dynamo Pro Wrestling for some time. Um, Chris, you are the obviously the announcer. Um, and Luke, I know you do a little bit of announcing and you are the director of media relations. Um, how that how that whole role start? You know what I mean, Jim Yount, the the head of the organization. How do you guys wind up linking up with um, with Dynamo? Well, to give you an idea, I'm on my side of things. For for years, I've been around wrestling pretty much most of my life. I remember back when I was ten, eleven years old, and being in the smoky, dingy St. Louis wrestling on the independent scene, and growing mm-hmm. up. It sounds weird, but my my own flesh and blood was actually a pro wrestler back when I was in my teens, and I I made the transition number of years inside the ring, um, and I went to being a referee, and then I started announcing, and right away, Dynamo Pro Wrestling hooked me and said, "Hey, we want you to come on board. We want you to be a part of this of this promotion." And to be honest with you, I haven't really looked back and. To be honest with you, Chris and I, the, the the friendship between the two of us, I mean, we've known each other for a long time, and I, and I know Chris has got a lot of, a lot more information because it, it, it wasn't just Chris coming to Dynamo Pro. It's been something that we've been we've been in touch for a number of years. Right. Well, I, I was, I, and I can, and I can vouch for for Luke. He was he was a wrestler. I mean, yeah, he was a yeah, skinny yeah. he. He was a he was a skinny hundred and fifty pound uh, cruiserweight, I guess you would call it, uh, flying around the ring um, when he first started. Uh, I, the first match I ever refereed was him, and it was actually it was him and his brother um, in I believe some I believe at the Herbert Hoover Boys and Girls Club, and I'm like, okay, this is this is the way my ref career is going to start is two of my friends ref, wrestling each other. So, and um, I started in '97 with the local organization just doing recaps for the fan newsletter that they sent out. They had a they had a pretty substantial fan newsletter that they went out, and I just did recaps for them, and then I went to the home video side where I was doing the commentary, uh, and then I became an announcer slash referee, and I actually took, I believe, 12, 12 years off of wrestling because I got tired of the politics and all the, the bull that goes on between organizations sometimes, and I came back as an announcer for another, and Luke was actually working for them as their quote-unquote general manager, and... Mm-hmm. Then I came to Dynamo and got my job at Dynamo, had to wait a few months, and then started announcing, and I haven't looked back, and now I'm assisting Luke everywhere, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys really have been blowing and going, man, because, like, when I first met you guys, I mean, you guys are still doing some pretty substantial stuff, but you guys are a little bit of everywhere, and, yeah, again, kudos to you, Luke, for um, for really being able to take advantage of this tool of social media and media in general. You know, you reached out to me, you know, I host a show on um, STL TV called the Daily Mix, which um, you guys were on, and you know it's just it's just smart business to you know take advantage of you know the tools that are around you. So again, man, pat on your back because it's. I, th- I was gonna say I think the bi- the first big media push we did was for our first uh, charity show we did, Stroke Ain't No Joke, and it we haven't looked back since then. So. Well, that was the fir- that was the first big one, right, Luke? Yeah, that was one of the the first big events. And like I said. The, the media buzz in, in professional wrestling, I mean, it has just changed so much from when I first got involved now almost about 26, 27 years ago. I mean, back then it was, it was still the tail end of the territory days, the idea of where you would wrestle, like, like in, in St. Louis where you were talking about the days 
of Sam Muchnick and wrestling in Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, um, Indianapolis, and making that small little section. And it's now, I mean, now you've got things like wrestlers that are able to do interviews on things like Facebook, Facebook Live, talking about Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and all these different media outlets. I mean, it just it just makes your head spin how many how many different avenues to go out there. And I mean, again, it's just one of those where Dynamo Pro Wrestling is always willing to go out there and and let the people know, hey, if you want to see the best in pro wrestling, Dynamo Pro Wrestling is the way to go. And, I mean, again, the following we have on social media, I mean, again, we can't say thank you enough for all those wonderful people who take the time and just keep on top of Dynamo Pro Wrestling because it is a phenomenal group of professional wrestlers. And I want to I want to I want to add to that 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 we were kind of the first to to embrace the media side of it. We were you know it was like let's try this and see what what happens, and it's been going good ever since then. So I mean we're we're pretty much one of the first organizations locally to jump on the media bandwagon. So. Well, and like I said, you know, kudos to Luke. I mean, both of you guys, like I said, it's all a team effort, but you guys obviously are taking advantage of it because, I mean, like I've always said, <clears throat> like with, well, I've started pretty much my podcast, it's me speaking to you from scratch, and have not, you know, it's not a media empire, obviously, but, you know, through that, I wound up hooking up with Pat Militich and creating another podcast, so it's like every little bit counts, man, and so it, it's good that you got, you know, cats like Luke and yourself, Chris, to take advantage, man. Um Talking about, obviously, pro wrestling, we can't obviously talk about it without talking about what's going on now in the world of professional wrestling. Um, we're going to talk about what future events Dynamo Pro has coming on down the line, but, you know, what do you guys think about what's going on now? I mean, like I said, you guys have obviously blended a nice little blend of, of old school, new school, and, you know, like I said, your your, your roster, is your, the pedig pedigree's deep, man. Everybody's very well trained, and, and they really know what they're doing. Um, what, what, do, what do you think about what you see now as it relates to uh, the world of professional wrestling? Well, what I see in the world of professional wrestling, I'm sorry, I, mean, I, I should probably point direct that to one of you, but I'm sorry. Well, 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 give me an idea. I look at things from the point of view, and, and I've heard a lot of people lately say that when you look at professional wrestling, there's only one place you really look at, and you look at WWE. And a lot of people up until even a couple of years ago looked at the WWE as the land of the giants. But now there's been a, a change in professional wrestling. I mean, again, you have the wrestlers. I mean, it's not somebody – saying, oh, well, this is a wrestler, he's big, he's, he's got muscles, he's got all this, that, and whatnot. A lot of wrestlers right now that you're seeing in professional wrestling are the wrestlers that the fans are, are not necessarily having shoved down their throats. I mean, you sit there, if you look at World Wrestling Entertainment right now, who are the top three guys as we're, as we're going into their next major pay-per-view event? You have Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Roman, uh, and Roman Reigns. And if you look around... Some of these other wrestlers that are, are making huge impacts, guys like AJ Styles, guys like Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, guys like Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, Finn Bauer. You look at guys who are, are tearing it up in New Japan, guys like Okama, uh, Okada and, and all the wrestlers over in Japan. I mean, it's, it's one of those things now that in professional wrestling, it's, it's back to that time period where it's not the land of the giants. Guys that can go out there and wrestle, I, I, I want to go back to something that Daniel Bryan said a couple nights ago. It, it's almost become a hybrid style. You have to be able to do it all yeah. to be a success on the grand stage. And, right and, 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 and in the same, the same, the same way, is, um, I felt for a while the WWE's product had gotten kind of stale, you know, just, you know, you got the same people at the top. There's nothing ever new that happens. They just recycle old feuds and stuff like that. And when with, when the NXT guys started coming up, um, like Ambrose and Rollins and Reigns, and I never, I, I just, they, they prove that they can't. And there's still another batch of uh, NXT people down there that, are going to be up probably soon that are going to blow the roof off the place. And they're not the biggest guys. Like you said, Nakamura and Finn Balor and um, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. And even, even in the, in the women, the women's wrestling has gotten so much better since we've gotten away from that diva style of wrestling with, with Charlotte and Sasha Banks, who's, who's probably my favorite right now is Sasha Banks. So, yeah, I mean, it's very interesting. I, I noticed a little while ago the women, I mean, and, and I was—I guess I can ask, like, what role do you think the, the injuries play 
in in this roster and their inability i mean is it just creative is it i mean it's probably a bunch of things it's not just one particular thing but injuries and the creative it's like uh it hasn't always been that ceiling though you know what i mean like back in the day it was the horsemen and you know fuck man they had every belt the tag belts the world belt the u.s belt the tv belt like you know they had that kind of monopoly it was good for business but is that kind of the same thing that's going on I mean, well, I, injuries I probably in, injuries played a big part of it, you know. When you have guys like your Randy Orton's go down, and all the guys that are expected to care, and when Cena went down, I mean, who's going to replace who's going to replace that? They had no choice but to bring up to to fast forward some people, but it's worked. And I mean, the tag the tag division is was the weakest part of the company for a while. Is now probably one of the strongest. You that's a, you've that's, got, yeah, I'm sorry. That's another thing. Yeah, because, the, Enzo and Cass. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I, I mean, Enzo and Cass is my favorite team right now. Um, but but you have the New Day and you have you have the uh, the club and you have just all those teams and with with Wilder and uh, Dawson down in NXT and Jordan and Gable down in NXT. Tag team wrestling is another thing that's coming back so i mean well, and you, of course you know you have michael p.s hayes back there who was you know free bear fantasia so he, he's definitely cultivating maybe not in the nxt uh, area but he's you know he's definitely you know probably teaching them cats how to how to you know do their thing on the in the from the tag team style from the tag team family. agreed so are you guys fans? are you guys with it are you guys fans of the product right now um well, i've become more of a fan lately <laughs> Okay. No, I'm well, with Chris, it. Like I'm, I was. I. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I say I. I look at Chris and I have had many discussions about professional wrestling as a whole. And while he talks about the, the resurgence of the the women's division, and again, you look at some of these other wrestlers that are coming up in the women's division. I mean, it's not just your Charlottes and your Becky Lynches and your Sasha Banks. You're looking at wrestlers like Bailey. You're looking at wrestlers that have come in like uh, mm -hmm. I know uh, there there's different names like uh, your your Mary Dobson, your uh, I believe her name is Deanna Paluzzo. There, there's a lot of other wrestlers. Us, Santana Garrett has made a, a few appearances in it too. The tag team division is, is really picking up guys like the Revival, uh, guys like Mojo Rawley and, and, and Zack Ryder. When you sit there and look at professional wrestling, and again, it's all about, and a lot of it is all about opportunity and bringing your A game every day. And this year, just the list of injuries, and you sit there and look at it, you look at guys like Rollins, you look at guys like Randy Orton and John Cena, among others. In professional wrestling, if, if one, it's like I say, one door closes, one more is going to open. And, and right now, I I have to say, but I'm really enjoying professional wrestling as a whole. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, Enzo and Cass. And uh, once Enzo went down, I mean, obviously, if if you remember where they went that next week with Cass, they had him in single stuff. I mean, I think that was like a preemptive kind of possibly seeing what he could do grooming him and maybe not grooming him but to see what he could do on the mic see how he could work without Enzo and he did amazing dude everyone was like whoa and in my mind as an old school fan like you can kind of see how they lay it out weeks weeks in advance but you know we'll see I hope they don't bust them up bust them up because that's a great great tag team man Enzo and Cass are doesn't, doesn't uh doesn't Enzo and Cass remind you of the a new version of the new age outlaws you, I mean oh no absolutely the they, for sure I mean and and if you watch NXT, I think that uh, uh, Dash and uh, Dawson remind me of the Brainbusters, so of that old school tag team mentality. Bringing that, bring, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And you gotta, well, it, anymore, it's like some some of these kids who are, I don't know, their demographic, like they have no clue about Crockett promotions. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like they're shooting for a whole new demo which is fine you know like i said i just want to get your opinions on what you know i've had on a few few people just like i just want to pick their brains on where you know if if you know where wrestling was how do you how do you feel about where it's going i mean it's still viable you know raw ratings are up you know they had a, an amazing uh wrestlemania so you know i'm not mad at it like i was for a long time like like chris like i went away like i didn't watch it for for years almost after um what they call that the invasion you know, pretty much not long after that, like I kind of dipped out, and then it, yeah, it, it just it just kind of got bad. But um, you know, I, you can't ever hate on. I, I always thought like as soon as all these wrestlers that I knew were gone, I wouldn't care anymore. But you know, it's still like you get your Enzos, you get your new characters, you know how to take professional wrestlers to another level, and um, you know, 
change the game, man, because they're definitely changing the game, Enzo and Cass. But, uh, you know, don't want to mark out for Enzo and Cass too hard. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have, man, like I said, you guys' roster, or not roster, your, your schedule is so full, man. You guys have so much going on. Um, what's going on here in the next couple months, man? I know it's I know it's crazy, but lay it out for us a little bit. What do you guys got? What's the schedule looking like? Well, to give you an idea, Jeff, what I'm looking at, one of the things that's really kind of registering with me is this next upcoming few days. I mean, you look at how things are right now in Dynamo Pro Wrestling, you've got to start at the very top of the list. And it's a man who intimidates or tries to intimidate everybody, and that is the intelligent monster, Dirty Jake Dirt. Mm. You've got to look at the man, three-time Dynamo Pro Heavyweight Champion, the, the self-procrest greatest champion in Dynamo Pro Wrestling history. Well, what have, I, you were supposed to get back with me. Have we confirmed his arrival on the It's Me Speaking to You airwaves? Are we going to make that happen? Well, right now, like I say, I know we, we've talked off, off air. We've talked in, in multiple conversations. Like I said, Dirty Jake Durden is very a very elusive man as of right. I mean, if you look at things and kind of go into what we were going for, he's, he's been called out. And I remember that Chris actually was there and myself as well, but Chris was there. Mike Outlaw has called out Dirty Jake Durden, and at that point, Durden and Outlaw have not been in the same building. It's been one of those, Durden has been in high demand, and it's one of those where I believe we're going to have Durden in the next few days, hopefully having an opportunity to come here and speak with you. I mean, you know, he's one of those that always feels that things need to be around him, and he's not afraid to speak his mind. But like I said, we're looking at things, you look at that, you look at the, the D1 division, you look at the tag team division, which is in Dynamo Pro is, is red hot as of late. And I mean, again, when you're looking at things, July 16th, the Sports Academy, we've got a lot of great wrestling to come. And I was talking with uh, Dynamo Pro management today. You know that the tag teams are there, and, and I just got noted a few minutes ago, and it's kind of an exclusive here on, on the show this evening is that next Saturday night, high-level enterprise will be having to give their obligatory rematch to the professionals. Oh. So that's one of those matches that's out there. I mean, again, you've got two teams. Both have held the Dynamo Pro Tag Team Championship. You've got a lot of great wrestlers that are going to be coming into the Sports Academy. You've got wrestlers like Keon Option, CJ Stein, the Snitch, the Dynamo Pro D1 champion outcast, Brandon Espinosa, Ricky Cruz. I mean, you sit there and you and you've talked about the roster of Dynamo Pro Wrestling. And I mean again, there are so many wrestlers that are going out and giving a hundred percent every night and doing their best and leaving it all in the ring. And then you turn around six days later, not too con, at the Gateway Center, a building that's been known for a lot of large-scale professional wrestling organizations to come in, and Dynamo Pro gets to put their little niche in 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 the, the, the lineage of that building. I mean, already signed Delirious taking on Mike Outlaw. We mm. already know Davey Richards is going to be in attendance. We just announced a few days ago Angelina Love is going to be in attendance. I mean, there's going to be a phenomenal night of professional wrestling. Dynamo Pro Wrestling right now is firing on all cylinders, and they always say, St. Louis summers are usually one of the hottest on record. This <laughs> summer with Dynamo Pro, especially in the next few days, I mean, again, you're going to, you think things are hot now in Dynamo Pro, just wait in the next few days, and you're going to see that dial get turned up a bunch more. I wish I could be at NaziCon, but unfortunately, I, I personally have some personal business to take care of that weekend, so I won't be at NaziCon, but I really am looking forward to seeing the video of Delirious and Mike Outlaw. I mean, we we think that Delirious challenged Mike Outlaw. I mean, in the promo video that he put, the word, only words you could really understand and put together were Dynamo Pro and Mike Outlaw and NatsuCon. So, but, so Mike, Mike Outlaw answered the challenge, I guess, and that's what's going to happen at NatsuCon. And like I said, I wish I could be there, but Luke's, gonna, Luke's got my back that weekend, and it's going to be great. And I can't wait for the Sports Academy this, this Saturday night. I mean, it's been, a, it's been a while since we've had a Dynamo Pro event. We, we took a month just to kind of re, you know, redo things. It's going to be yeah, a no. great time. 
it's going to be it's going to be a great time at, at, at the sports academy. I mean, because I know CJ Shine and the Snitch are having a Twitter battle right now that they're going back and forth on Twitter, and so I, that that might come to the head at uh, at the sports academy. It, it's going to be a great night. I can't wait. I can't. I just, I can't wait. So, <laughs> like I said, you guys, your schedule is quite deep. But one of the things that uh, you had mentioned there, Luke, one of the things that I thought that was quite cool, you guys had brought to the table as far as. Um, you know, what people can expect when you, you know, mess with Dynamo is that new division. You guys created that D1 division. Um, tell me a little bit about that, man, because I've, as an old school fan, I always loved that there was a chase for the world belt, and I always liked, and even WWE did it, I always liked that there was a chase for, like, that U.S. belt or that intercontinental belt. What, 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 how's that, how'd that D1 thing get introduced, man? That's pretty cool. Well, that's one of the things back when we were talking at the tail end of last year, and, and it wasn't just one or two people saying, hey, what about this, what about this? It was things that we were hearing all over the place. We were hearing them in Edwardsville. We were hearing them in Wood River. We were hearing it in Fenton. We were hearing it in Eureka. We were hearing it all across the area. When is Dynamo Pro Wrestling going to have another championship? And when you look at the matches that were there, and Chris and I had the opportunity to be there live for the three qualifying matches. I mean, you had a six-man elimination matches. And, I mean, look at some of the names you had in there. Brandon Aaron, Evan Morris, Shorty Big, Jaden Phoenix, <clears throat> Elvis Aliaga, Outcast. I mean, right in there, you've got guys who are no strangers to being at that very top level of professional wrestling. And we had that, that those finals, and, I mean, a lot of people were looking at it. Elvis Aliaga, Jaden Phoenix, and Outcast. I think we'd all agree, three comes completely different styles being brought to the table. And since Outcast was crowned the initial D1 champion, he's taken on all comers. I mean, if you look at it, a lot of people would say, oh, well, it's this, or it's, it's, it's <coughs> the smaller guys, or things like that. Outcast has made no bones about it. Guys like Elvis Aliaga, Jaden Phoenix, KLD, Kevin Lee Davidson, Brandon Espinoza, uh, Ricky Cruz, Jake Durden, I mean, when it, uh, Kiyoshi Suzuka, I mean, when you sit there and look at it, Outcast has made it a point to step up, and he's made no bones about it. He's going to go out there. He's going to take on any challenger that wants to come through the doors of Dynamo Pro Wrestling and challenge him for that championship. He doesn't care if they're seven foot tall and weigh 400 pounds or if they're 100, like what Chris said earlier, 150 pounds soaking wet and, they're, and they can be a cruiserweight or a light heavyweight. Outcast has gone out there, and he's really made a niche that the D1 championship is what a lot of people have said as of late could very well become the stepping stone to an opportunity for the Dynamo Pro Heavyweight title. Well, I mean, and traditionally, and like, and, that's how it's been. But and, no, go, no, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Jeff. I didn't mean to step all over you, but no, and like it. Luke said, it's 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 a stepping it's a stepping stone. If you remember to, um, I believe it was Wood River when it was Jake Durden and Outcast, and they had a 15 minute time limit draw. That was probably one of the best matches we we've, we've seen in a while. Outcast proved that he can he can go with Jake Durden and lasted 15 minutes with him. What would happen if they get a 30 minute time limit match? I mean, it's it's a stepping stone. Well, no, absolutely, and, and one of the things you said, uh, Luke, you know, I, if I remember correctly, man, one of one of um, one of his first defenses after he won the D1 title was was against uh, Jake Durden. Am I am I crossing my cards there? No, you're not crossing no, it, anything at all, Jeff. I mean, these two men, as Chris was saying earlier, these two men, Dirty Jake Durden, being a Dynamo Pro Heavyweight Champion, he feels in his mind, and again, I'm, I'm not going to say anything cross because I, I, I'm very fearful for my life whenever uh, Jake Durden comes walking around a ring. Self-preservation kicks in. That's smart. <laughs> smart. Exactly. But when you have Jake Durden, and Chris was there, Jake Durden's like, I'll take on anybody, anywhere, anytime. And Outcast could have very easily walked in and said, hey, I'm the D1 champion. I'm right up there, number one, number two contender for this championship. I want a shot at your championship. But Outcast, he stepped it up a little bit, and he made it, you think you're the greatest champion? Tell you what, why don't we put both of them on the line and see who's the mm -hmm. big dog here in Dynamo Pro. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you right now, when that match was over, the fans knew that Dirty Jake Durden was double tough, but a lot of fans really began to realize 
how tough of a competitor Outcast is, and and Chris and I have talked about it on a lot of different a lot of different fronts. The question is going to be not only is who's going to take the championship, who's going to be the one to finally knock Dirty Jake Durden off the throne here in Dynamo Pro, but who's going to be the one that's going to finally get the right combination of things to take the D1 championship from Outcast? I mean, the man held the title now. What, what would you say, Chris? Six months? Seven months? Almost, uh, we are, we're, we're going on almost a year, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it's, it's, been, we're a while. Going, we're, it's been a while, it, yeah. It, and he's been probably the hardest working person in the in the area with this D1 title. He's defended about every card that Dynamo Pro has run, and like you said, and the and the challengers have been different. You got a high flyer like Jaden Phoenix. You got a more of a ground game with Elvis Aliaga. You got a big man with Kevin Lee Davidson, and and from there it's just he he can adapt to just about any any style. So, and it, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from here. Well, and then, like I said, that, that division has always been, like you said, almost a stepping stone. If you look at, you know, you know, back in the day, the U.S. the U.S. champion, you know, God, you know, unfortunately, uh, Magnum T.A., you know, he was a pretty, pretty popular uh, U.S. heavyweight champion, which they were grooming for the heavyweight championship or even the intercontinental championship in the WWE now. You know, you had... You know, Back in the day, you know, it was, you know, Macho had it and he was, a you know, champion. And then you had Ricky Steamboat, like all of these people held this kind of stepping stone title. So, yeah, man, Outcast is obviously uh, not, not one to be trifled with, and especially his lineage as far as the tag team championship with Shorty Biggs. Like the guys held gold or silver, as it were, you know, in, in um, a, a couple of different singles and tag team divisions. Well, that's one thing I got to look at too, Jeff, and you, and you hit the nail on the head. Shorty Biggs and Outcast, two men. Uh, they've said on many times, as a matter of fact, I think one on Dynamo Pro Aftershock, the exclusive voice of Dynamo Pro Wrestling uh, after live events. Shorty Biggs and Outcast have said they're brothers from different mothers. I mean, these two men know each other like the back of their hands. These two men held the Dynamo Pro Championship for almost two years. That's unheard of, not necessarily just on, a, on, on, a, on any level. Because, I mean, again, these two men went out there and they took on the best teams that not just the Midwest had to offer, and they kept the championship. Right. And that's one of the things that when you sit there and look at you were talking about a lot of great wrestlers of the day, guys like, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, you brought up a name that just kind of registered with me was Magnum PA. Here's a guy, good-looking guy, a lot of talent, lot of, a lot of charisma, a man who had so much to go with, a man who very easily and was challenging Ric Flair on a regular basis for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And to me, that's one of those things with Dynamo Pro Wrestling is that there are so many guys who can go and they can make it a point to be right there challenging night in, night out for for the top spot. I mean, I look at guys like uh, one that popped into my head, CJ Shine. Here's a guy... He just graduated a few months ago from the Dynamo Pro Dojo, and he's already getting the opportunity to wrestle for the Missouri Wrestling Revival Missouri State Championship with Brandon Espinoza. You've got guys like Keon Option, Justin Dier. Uh, you've got guys like DJ Shine. You've got guys like the alternative, Ozzy Gallagher. You've got so many guys, when they're coming out of the Dynamo Pro Dojo, and they're coming from different promotions throughout the Midwest, and they're coming in, it's almost like when they walk in the door, it doesn't matter their very first day, anybody who's walking into Dynamo Pro Wrestling has a legitimate shot at being the one to rise to that next level if you're in Dynamo Pro. And the dojo, the dojo has, has produced so many great graduates. I mean, I go back to Mike Outlaw. Within his first year, he won. He won the. He he got a shot at the title um, from a from a six pat from a six way match elimination match uh, in November, and then in December he beat Ricky Cruz for the title. And and he's a gra he's one of the graduates of the Dynamo Pro Dojo. I mean, Jake Durden has is out of the Dynamo Pro Dojo. CJ Shine, Keon Option, Justin Deere. All these guys, if you graduate from the Dynamo Pro Dojo, you're going to be one of the bigger names in the wrestling business. I mean, that's plain and simple. 
Well, and, and that's absolutely true, man. Like, Ricky Cruz, whom I've had on the show, I mean, they, literally the dude is probably one of the most decorated cats here in the Midwest, you know, from, from going down to Mexico with the El Rey Championship, uh, championships here, GWF. I mean, he's, he's just accumulated, you know, he's just stacking the gold, if you will. I mean, of course, he doesn't have it right, right at the moment, but like I said, that just adds to the whole credibility of, you know, all of these cats, man. They're not just local you know what i mean it's not just like you know this is not just a local organization you have people you know like i said jake durden has tried out at the performance center in the wwe ricky crude has traveled the world mike outlaw has you know definitely traveled for you know anywhere memphis florida i mean he's a little bit of everywhere as well so you know the, the the product is hot man and you guys are absolutely just blowing it up and i'm just i'm just absolutely thankful to have met you guys and like really be a part of of the growth of it man because it's been cool to see because it's you know um I, I love professional wrestling, and especially in St. Louis, man. It's just so cool to see oh. that kind of revival still, or that kind of life of professional wrestling still going on in St. Louis. Definitely, definitely agree. I just, I mean, Dino Pro is hot right now. I mean, sometimes, sometimes people like to kick people when they're down. Just because we haven't run, doesn't mean we're still not around. But we're we got the, we got a lot of things in the hopper. We got the Sports Academy this week. We got Natsukan, and it's just. It's gonna be it's gonna be hot here in St. Louis this, in the next couple of weeks, and well, you, I, I, I'm you gotta look at it's you gotta look at things too, Chris. I mean, again, a lot of people say, oh well, Dynamo Pro they they haven't had an event in a couple of weeks, and this and that. The fact is, Dynamo Pro Wrestling has been raising the bar for professional wrestling now for almost a decade. I mean, you look at all the different events that Dynamo Pro Wrestling has put on. There's a lot of people that say, oh well, this and this. Dynamo Pro Wrestling. For the last couple of years, it's not putting on 10 or 12 or 15 events. Dynamo Pro Wrestling has been pushing 30 events a year. I mean, this is a company that's going all around the bi-state area, bringing the best in professional wrestling. And you've got guys, I mean, again, the reason why the talent roster is so deep, and you look at some of these guys, high-level enterprise have been to Japan. Uh, John Webb has been to Japan on two occasions to pro wrestling. Noah, Jack Gamble has been to, to Noah on occasion. You've got guys like Azzy Gallagher who's been to Mexico. You've got guys like KLD who's been to, to the UK and to Italy. I mean, there's a lot of wrestlers that have had that international uh, that international player, that international experience. Guys like the Yoga Monster, Mike Seidel. I mean, when you're sitting here and you're looking at the wrestling, the wrestling lineup at Dynamo Pro Wrestling, every time you come to Dynamo Pro Wrestling, you're going to see the best. And that's one of the things that makes Dynamo Pro unique. You had said earlier about how professional wrestling has one or, or two different ways. Dynamo Pro Wrestling is a professional wrestling company where the young fans, the six and seven and eight year olds, who are really getting that first exposure to professional wrestling, can see wrestlers leaving it all out there on the line. You've got those. I remember a few months ago, my own father, who's in his, his mid seventies, came out and got to see wrestling the way that he remembered it. Mm -hmm. Nice. And that, and that's, and that's the way the Dynamo Pro is. You're going to have something for everybody. And if you come out to a Dynamo Pro event, it, it, it's kind of one of those things. Once you've been once, you've got to come again because we bring on a consistent basis the, the best in professional wrestling. And and I want to say something to that. I mean, in in 2015, Dynamo Pro ran the most events of any local wrestling organization in in the Midwest. We we I, if me and Luke counted right, I believe we did 26 events in in uh, the year 2015. Am I right, Luke? That that that's correct, Chris. Okay, and I mean, and you think about it, we've 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 done uh, shows at venues that have never had pro wrestling at before, like off Broadway. Like we were the first to bring wrestling to the ready room. I mean, right. it's 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 a Dynamo Pro is the premier Midwest wrestling organization, uh, and we were voted, I believe, a fan fan voted, I should say. Fan voted number one wrestling organization on Midwest Wrestling Revival. We've had the uh, the the MWR Wrestler of the Year has been a part of our roster for several years. Jake Durden was, I believe, 2014. Um, Jeremy Wyatt, who has wrestled for Dynamo Pro, was 2015. I mean, the the women's wrestler of the year, Lucy Mendez, Rookie Cruz. I, mean, I don't know if you mentioned that already, but yeah, yeah, Rookie and Cruz, and also. Brandon Espinoza. 
High level enterprise. The tag team of the year for 2015 was part of our roster. Big fan of I those mean, guys, man. Those guys remind me. I told. I forget which one I told. I forget, but uh, they remind me of the Midnight Express. I know they're uh, quote unquote baby faces, but they. I don't know. They, they remind me of the Midnight Express. And if anybody, does. I, I I I tend to agree with you. They're they're more of a high flying. It's it's Dynamo Pro is the greatest. Like I said. We we ran the most events in 2015 of any organization, and I stand by our product more than than well any anything. of this any so. of this notion of like it, it, me like anything in life it's it's quality it's not quantity like you could throw fucking you know 30 balls of shit at the wall but it's still 30 balls of shit you know what I mean it's like you gotta you gotta bring the pain and I don't you know I would rather see a few you know fewer better quality wrestling cards than just like you know. And all 26 of those shows were high-quality shows, and I put them up against anything that anyone's put up in the entire Midwest. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, Dynamo Pro, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not knocking your hustle, man. Like, and, and you got you got great people, you know, heading it up, Jim Young, Crystal Young. I mean, and you got, you know, guys like you, Luke. I, I keep saying it, but, I mean, it's absolutely true in this day and age, man. Content, we've had this conversation, content is king, and you are just like you're doing a great job of getting the word out. Um, even to you know, even smaller you know shows like this, every little bit counts, man. I can I see you guys are on Wrestle Talk, you're on Sports Shack, you know you're doing what you're supposed to do, and you know spreading the media <clears throat> on your. If product. we get if we get if we get one person to come out to our show from your show that that say hey we list, we heard you on it's me speaking to you, it's 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 worth our time. I mean. You know, no, I, mean, absolutely. I don't know how I don't, I don't I don't know how Luke feels about it. But if we get one person that says, hey, we heard you on the Wrestle Talk podcast and they, they talk so highly of you. We came out. We wanted to come out and see you guys, you know, when well, another me, big comment, me, it's worth it. it a huge it's component of it. The market is so small here in the Midwest. The word travels fast. Good word travels fast. Bad word travels fast. So all of these different little puddles you guys can drop your rock in, your rock being the Dynamo Pro product, it'll just help, you know, because there's that ripple effect that goes down. Sorry, I didn't and mean And that's one thing, too. That's one thing to look at, too, Jeff, is we're sitting here with Dynamo Pro Wrestling. Dynamo Pro Wrestling has had the opportunity for a lot of great programs. Like, if me speaking to you, Wrestle Talk, uh, the Sports Shack, Wrestle Radio. And it's not just here on the local level as well. We've had the opportunity to be on such programs as indie power rankings. We've had the opportunity to be on All Wrestling Talk Nation. We've had the opportunity to be on Fighting with Wrestling out of the California area. Uh, we're going to have in the next few days the opportunity to be on Pro Wrestling Opinion out of New York. Uh, I mean, and Dynamo Pro Wrestling is all over the place from, from, the, from the Internet and the social media aspect. But also, if you look at it, too, a lot of people don't realize how much of a radio following. I mean, again, guys like the brothers on whatever, the yes. Shaw brothers, Nathan Brandon Shaw on CBS Radio 920, yep. these gentlemen have consistently been around Animo Pro events and always letting people know what's there. We have an opportunity. We've been several times on 1570 in Alton, 94.3 FM. We've been on KCFD at Flow Valley. We're getting ready to, to make our debut appearance at WLCA in Godfrey. We've had the opportunity to be on 1380. We've had the opportunity of being on 590 AM. I mean, again, Dynamo Pro Wrestling, when you bring professional wrestling, you talk about professional wrestling in St. Louis, a lot of people are starting to hear the name Dynamo Pro Wrestling, and it's one of those where they're not hearing it because of, oh, so-and-so, did you catch it? No, they're hearing it. You've got to check this out. Dynamo Pro Wrestling, like you said, Jeff, brings it every time. And when you go there from the opening match, I think back to a night where Chris and I had to scurry for our lives down at the Stratford, the night where you had a Dynamo Pro Heavyweight Championship match, and Jake Durden puts Ricky Cruz through a wall. Oh, yeah, dude. That was epic, dude. That was that was when I knew it was like, yep, these boys are doing it right, because that shit was, like you said, everybody like ran for their lives. And, you know, Rick, you guys had to get Rick, or you had to get Durden under control. You got Ricky pulled to the back. And then somehow Ricky got loose and came out. I mean, that was, dude, that was. Jake and Ricky have still never have, since that time, Jake and Ricky have never been in the same building at the same time yet. And I fear for the next time because, I mean, it was not one pull-apart. It was two pull-aparts, plus it was their mat, plus their matches 
where Ricky went through Ricky went through a wall. They basically destroyed the destroyed the merchandise stand. I mean, from what I understand, the locker room, they walked through the locker room battling each other. They came out the other side of the locker room, and they went through the wall. So, I mean, it's... Yeah, I was, I was firsthand for that one, bro. That was, and I had my little one there. I think that was, I don't know if that was her first one or one of her first ones. And Jake Durden is not Jake Durden to her. She's eight, and he's the dirty man. So she was, <laughs> she was quite frightened. And uh, since they've made up, actually, we had her first raw taping. We actually ran into Jake. And I uh, got a picture with uh, him and my daughter, which was cool. Um, man, no, absolutely. Obviously, I could sit here. We could sit here and chop it up forever. But, yeah, Dynamo Pro Wrestling is obviously taking over the Midwest. Why don't you guys do me a favor, shout out any uh, social media where we can find the website, the Twitter, any of that goodness. Well, Chris, do you, do you want to go ahead and, and, and take the duties? I mean, you are the voice of Dynamo Pro. I'm going to go ahead and let well, you, do, you do it right every time. Well, I can, I can do I can do some of it. Uh, it's DynamoProWrestling.com. You can like us on Facebook at Dynamo Pro Wrestling, uh, on Twitter at Dynamo Pro. I mean, um, there's a Dynamo Pro Dojo page. Uh, I believe it's Dynamo Pro Dojo at gmail.com. If you want, if you have a dream of becoming a wrestler or a referee or a manager, email email Dynamo Pro Dojo at gmail.com. We'll get you hooked up. I mean, it's going to be great. And then on the sixth, uh, is it the 16th this Saturday? I'm, I, I, I lose track. I'm losing track of days here, guys. Uh, G- July the 16th at the Sports Academy, Glen Carbon, Illinois. Uh, you can get your ticket, your advanced tickets at the Sports Academy, or you can buy them on DynamoProWrestling.com. Save yourself a few bucks. It's $10 in advance, $12 day of show. Um, NatsuCon in the Gateway Center in, in Collinsville is on July 22nd. I believe you get your tickets at DynamoProWrestling.com or I believe NatsuCon.org is the website. Uh, Delirious versus Mike Outlaw, Davey Richards, and Angel- Angelina Love are going to make an appearance. And did I cover it all? Did I forget something? Wait, you blew- you forgot. You forgot two things, Chris. You got everything taken care of. So two things. Remember, if you want to hear about the best, the best, the happenings, everything that goes on at Dynamo Pro Live events, you need to go to Dynamo Pro Aftershock. You can catch them on the uh, on the ropes network dot com. They have exclusive interviews, match recap. They have it all at on the ropes network. If you go onto that website and click on Dynamo Pro Aftershock and. If you've ever had the dream of becoming a professional wrestler, you have the opportunity to go to the Dynamo Pro Dojo on Sunday, July 24th at the Dynamo Pro Dojo, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. There's going to be a special seminar being hosted by Ring of Honor's Delirious. If you want to be a professional wrestler, you want to make that jump and say, this is something that's for me, you need to make sure go to the Dynamo Pro Dojo page. If you're a professional wrestler that wants to take it to the next level, Dynamo Pro Dojo on Facebook. You can get all the information. You can register for a phenomenal opportunity to get yourself seen to make yourself even a more complete wrestler. Dynamo Pro Dojo on Facebook. Dynamo Pro Wrestling. Like I said, it's a, it's a hot time here in Dynamo Pro. And if you get the chance, July 16th, Sports Academy. Not too count on July 22nd. It's going to be awesome. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. This, these guys are absolutely, they are heading up a ship that is going to freaking boundless places. I'm telling you, Dynamo Pro Wrestling is putting it down. And if you are a professional wrestling fan, go check out all of the social networking stuff that this man just mentioned. The director of media relations, he is Luke Roberts. And the announcer, I don't know, don't you guys both announce together sometimes or is it all Mr. Rodell? It's primarily Mr. Rodell. He he's the voice. I just kind of I just kind of come along and, and whenever he whenever he says here talk. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Mr. Rodell is the voice of Dynamo Pro Wrestling. Man, it has been my pleasure, guys. And definitely, man, anytime you guys want to come back through, you guys got something going on. You know, it, it would be my absolute pleasure to do whatever we can to to get the word out because. You know, anybody who knows me knows I have issues as it relates to professional wrestling. So anything I can do to support you guys, man, is my pleasure. Jeff, I'd love to come back on one time. I'd I'd love to come back on one time. Even I'm sure Luke would come back on. Maybe just have a pro wrestling roundtable where you just talk about various things in the WWE and TNA and Ring of Honor and the local scene. It, 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 It doesn't have to necessarily be just about Dynamo as much as we love Dynamo Pro Wrestling. 
but let's have a wrestling roundtable sometime. We can, no, we can gather awesome. up a bunch of we can, we can gather up a bunch of people, Luke, couldn't we, and have a, just a big pro wrestling roundtable. That would be the shit, man. I'm a big fan of uh, the WWE. I, I forget. I don't know if they do it anymore, but they would do similar things like the territory, Southern wrestling, and they would have you know just a, a little bit of a roundtable. They'd look like they had a little bit of drink in their drink and some cigars, and they sat there and chopped it up about pro wrestling. That's a fantastic idea, man. Let's make it happen. There's plenty of pro wrestling heads here in the old St. Louis area. Exactly. Most definitely. Most definitely. Well, thank you guys so much, man, for taking the time. I know you fellas are busy, man, and so thank you for uh, carving out a little bit of time for us. It's been Mr. Luke Roberts, the Director of Media Relations for Dynamo Pro Wrestling. I, I, I can't say it enough. Go check him out. Mr. Chris Rodell, he is the voice of the Dynamo Pro Wrestling, you know. I, I, I like again. I can't say enough about it, man. There is so much going on. If you are a fan of professional wrestling, then this is what you need to be checking out because these boys are putting it down on a regular, on a regular. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys' time, man.